Okay, so I want to talk about MGTOW, MGTOW relating from the Philippine, Philippines point of view. The Philippines, Philippines get it. Most of the Filipinos, well, sorry, all the Filipinos and all the Filipinos I spoke to get it. In the same way, when people are Filipinas uh, just marrying foreigners because of poverty, it's not about poverty. Um, for the ma majority of people now, their livelihoods have improved over the last 10, 20 years because of the overseas working population, along with the fact that with the BPO, which is the call center industry, there has been a rising middle class in the Philippines as well. So it's not all, oh, it's poverty, because it's very, very easy to dismiss everything else. What you do have is some cultural issues which may be tied to it because I don't know about the drug and alcohol abuse and how long that has been an ongoing problem in the Philippines. Um, I mean, it's like in Glasgow. Glasgow is riddled with methadone. Um, drug abuse is horrendous. At the same time, although it's linked with poverty, it is not poverty. It's self-creation of poverty because once you get into that loop and decide to be destructive and rob from everybody in your community, you are creating the poverty. Um, so a lot of the, the women are looking for stable husbands. They're looking for, they, you know, this was it. Oh, this guy is overweight. This is this, this is that. And I'm going to get onto something very important and I'll put a video link to this as well. When women are looking for a lot of these guys for marriage, it's often without the realization of looking in the mirror. It's also looking for somebody that was classed as an F buddy, which is what um, uh, Pope, okay, I keep forgetting her first name, uh, we'll talk about in the video that I'm gonna add to this. Um, they are not marriage material. And this is, the, this is the important bit. In the Philippines, they recognize marriage material. Locally, they are looking at a lot of the guys and they may have tried relationships with the guys and a lot of the women you will talk to will actually say they're sick and tired of it. They're sick and tired of the drunkenness, the gambling, the womanizing, etc., etc. And that's why they look for Western guys. Now, Western guys are predominantly marriage material. They're heading there in the first place because what are the majority going for? Relationships. They're not going out there to play the field. I mean, there's a few people out there who obviously do play the field and then obviously there's a rife uh, adult industry all over Asia, um, but that is not the ones on the dating sites. That is not the ones that are looking to settle down. And that's the thing, they, in the Philippines, they recognize the MGTOW stuff in the sense that these women are looking for a foundation in traditional marriage. But when they look at MGTOW, they can understand why these guys are single in the first place. First, the first thing is they recognize um, the way the Western system is skewed and will ask questions why. When I was talking to my wife, for example, relating to the minimum wage thing, we were talking about, uh, sorry, the, the, the pay gap yesterday and we were talking about the, the law that was introduced in 1975 that said that women have more rights than men um, because they're more likely to have children, so as such, they don't have to do um, hours outside of, like, they not don't have to do, like, say, uh, on call, evenings, that sort of stuff. Um, because then they can get the union rep to actually pull this law out from 1975. It says you don't have to work evenings, you don't have to work um, weekends, you don't have to do on call, because you have family-friendly hours and that is biased towards women. At the same time, the same women will be complaining that they don't get the on-call allowance, they don't get the evening shift allowance, they don't get the weekend allowance, because they don't do those shifts, because they work family-friendly hours. But they then utilize equality. Now, bearing that family-friendly hours thing is not equality. Um, it's actually a sexist thing that women are fundamentally the mothers and should be put above on a pedestal above men um, to be allowed to be fathers because they're, they, they're allowed to go and look after kids but uh, men shouldn't be allowed to. Um, but they want the same pay for the ones doing all the awkward shifts and everything. Um, and I'm not being funny, 
if I was working somewhere and there was a woman doing the same job as me and she wanted to work Monday to Friday from 8 till 4 and I was like well you'll have to do the mid shift and the on call and the evenings and the weekend on call because uh, mommy's not allowed to because she took us to a tribunal now I know it's a, a little bit unfair I know it's a little bit unfair um, but could we give you an extra £25 a week or whatever, £50 a week? And then this Maureen goes, that's not fair. Yeah, why is he getting paid more than me? It's because he's bloody covering for you. But anyway, past that. Women in the Philippines, you talk to them about this, they just raise an eyebrow and go, what? That doesn't make any sense. It's not, it's, that's not right. But that's the point. They get it. But I would find many a woman argue with me that, well, women do have to have more kids uh, than men. You know, they, they have to have spend more time with kids and they're more likely to have That's because the whole legal system is biased that way. The whole system has already been adapted for that. It's, it's a failing of the entire system because it's have the cake and eat it. What I find in the Philippines is women recognize a lot of these fundamental things are just not common sense. That like that, why should you get paid the same as the guy that's doing all the unsocial stuff? Oh, because your contract says that you should be doing it, but you're not doing it because you threaten the company with a tribunal. It doesn't make sense in the Philippines. In the same way, people are very blunt. They'll say you're fat, you're this or that, but a lot of time, well most of the time, they're not even being offensive with it. They're, it it's, it's just the way people talk. It's normal. They're not emotionally hurt from people saying stuff that is actually reality. Um, in the same way when somebody said, well is it accommodating, accommodating accepting that a, a guy is a, an older guy is with a younger woman? If you can actually speak the local dialects, you'll get the real conversations because most of these women would not tell you directly. I just sit there and listen. And they will say, what, what's it like being with an old man? And what's it like like this, blah, blah, blah. Not about myself, but. <laughs> um, but, you know, like one of, um, I mean, I'm, I don't know them directly. Um, in fact, I've never met them, but I've been involved with some of the dis discussions in the sense that I'm sat talking with other people and the conversation's going on on the, the next table. But the, one, of the, one of the women that I don't directly know is 34, 35, and her husband's 70. And they're ask, they, they will talk about, why are you with that guy and not a younger guy and all this sort of stuff. And a lot of it comes down to the fundamental things of stability. And even though the guy is older, it's more a case of they have a nice house, a nice car, and you go, oh, it's all materialistic. It's stability. Um, a lot of the local guys would never reach that even if they tried. Even if they tried and were very career driven, etc., they would struggle to get to the same lifestyle. Now, being materialistic is one thing, because a lot of these women are not materialistic at all. All it is, is they're seeking a stable, stable environment they want, they want the traditional marriage. They want a good husband, the family um, home, the kids going through an education, having children, a traditional marriage. And at the same time, people go, oh, the downtrodden, the small poverty, and blah, blah. Go and spend time with some of these women. Because unless you're actually talking about some mates, 18 year old something that is being coerced by her relatives into getting married to a 70 year old guy or whatever these women have all made these decisions themselves and it's normally the 25 plus where they're getting to that point where they're thinking they you know they may have had a boyfriend they may have gone through life experiencing things and suddenly thought you know what i want to settle down i want i want a good husband i want to I want to be a, a good wife, etc., etc., and the focus goes to becoming that person. And this is the the thing. This is why I say I don't recommend anybody under twenty-five. 
because they haven't experienced life yet. But the majority of those that are over 25 have. They've had their playing around and messing around, doing all that, whatever they want to do. They've had the relationship breakups. They've had boyfriends cheating on them and whatever. So when they got, come out the other side, they are looking for somebody they can commit to. And that's why I find when, when people say, oh, the girlfriend, you know, the girlfriend's this, the girlfriend's that, don't trust Filipinos, da, da, da. If you're that bitter, look in the bloody mirror and ask the question why. Because a lot of it you may not see as being directly yourself, but often it is. The girl is too young. The girl is uneducated. The girl is not marriage material. And the video I'll add on to this, uh, which is from, her name's A Pope. Um, she is talking about the way that many women are trying to get like an NBA basketball player. They are, because she used to do matchmaking. And she was saying, you know, like, I want a guy like this, I want a CEO of a company, I want this. And then she's like, just for the height, I was six foot two, six foot three. It's only about 3% of the world population. But now you want him to be a professional sports person, a um, CEO of a company or whatever, and then you're turning around, and like she said, even when you have those relationships, they fail. Why? Because those guys are players. They're, they're, they ain't interested in settling down anyway. Um, for example, CEOs of companies, like most of the guys I work with, they're divorced. They're divorced. Why? Because they work. They're always they they're married to the business, and they're looking for stuff that doesn't exist. They're looking for partners that are what they would class as their f buddies or whatever, which are basically guys that would be material for one night stands. In the same way, that's exactly what those guys are looking for as well. They're not interested in a relationship. In fact. Even if they got into a relationship, the fail rate would be very high because after a month, they start looking around, you know, the same way a lot of these women do. So the, the, the whole concept of that is they, they're not looking for a marriage. They're looking for a, a uh, Barbie Ken, you know, a little box set of these little guys that um, aren't marriage material. At the same time, like she's saying here, even from her own views, she wanted a wealthy business person that, um, and she ended up marrying a pastor. And she, she found religion herself later on, but the point being is, even herself, she recognized where she, she had her own flaws, and this, it's why she stopped the matchmaking thing. Because she recognized a lot of people are going after them, something that does not exist. And that's where, a lot of Western women are going wrong. They put themselves on a high pedestal on things, um, for things that are unrealistic. The expectations are not only too high, but even if you did get them, they're not marriage material. A lot of the guys going to the Philippines are already geared up for marriage. That's the whole point. They are looking for that commitment. This is why you don't see many of the 20 to 30 somethings. I went to the Philippines in my 30s. But the, the point is, Predominantly, is guys 45 plus. Because they may have come out of another relationship or maybe their first main relationship. But the point being is, they have the level of commitment. And that's one of the things that gets overlooked. What you get is people saying, fat, <laughs> fat, foobard, and over, over 50. That's how it makes it so easy to be so bitter and annoyed about these guys doing this sort of stuff. Yet, for a lot of those women that whine about it, I'd say it's none of your business. At the end of the day, these guys are looking for finding a ideal relationship. At the same time, as I've said, the women that are 25-something have already gone through dealing with people with gambling habits, drinking habits, and whatever. They're looking for a bit of stability, and this is why a lot of them are looking for Westerners. Now, I also... <laughs> Because somebody asked me about kids as well. Um, the kids aspect, I, the only one I could actually say, because most of these guys, their kids are either adults or nearly adults anyway. But the only variables in that would be the Russians. Um, there's three Russian relationships I know. Um, and 
even the guys that were with them would say, do not marry a Russian woman. That's, and I'm not even going to say who these guys are, um, but they have some serious problems in their relationships. It's mainly down to jealousy. Um, there is jealousy between the new wife and the, the new wife and the daughter or the kids because the, I do not I do not understand them but then again I have not spent enough time with Russian women to even get engaged in that sort of stuff um, I find them frustrating enough at the bus uh, not the bus sorry the school gates they've got this obsession of standing right in front of the gate and just talking completely blocking everything um, and that's just that's just that I'm not getting into the don't indicate and other bits and pieces that get under my skin but it, the, the point being is it's not somebody I would even consider myself and it's a completely different um, relationship scenario but I will say that Filipino women understand traditional they understand what they're looking for in a relationship and as long as you do your due diligence, you're going to avoid the scammers. You're going to avoid the mistakes that many expats and foreigners that marry uh, Filipino women have. Because most of the stuff I see before they even get down that aisle. I mean, it's, it's a bit like when some of these guys, well, I said with the 18, 18 year old girl, her maturity level is probably about 15 year old, mentally. Her social aspects, she's probably not actually finished anything above high school. She hasn't had any financial commitment to that age for most. She hasn't had any responsibilities relating to looking even after herself. Um, she's probably been funded by uh, older siblings. As such, they're normally pretty spoiled because they've never had to worry about anything because it's funded by others. Um, and that's why I would say don't even bother looking. But if you're looking at 25-year-olds, even the, even the youngest member of family at 25 would have had some responsibilities um, because she is very likely to experience some of the problems that come along within the family life, whether it's deaths in the family, whether it's problems uh, relating to boyfriends. Um, they're becoming grounded. So when they're sort of going through that 25 plus phase, they're now looking to settle down. Now, this is why I sort of get the Midtown stuff myself, because if I knew what I knew now, when I was much younger, I would have avoided most of the pitfalls I got into. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not bitter or annoyed or anything else. It was just a case of life experiences. And this is why I find it funny when women get so aggressive with me. Like, is it, you, what, you, you're on your second wife now? Ha, 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 that sort of stuff. I'm like, no, I've only been married once. And, and I'm still married. I've been married a decade. I'm not bitter. Well, because I analyze stuff. I mean, I, I do come across this stuff from time to time, where people go very defensive because you're analysing things, and yet they assume it's an attack on them. But if you're unhappy in your own life, just look in the mirror. Because at the end of the day, like my last video, we was talking about, you know, if I was a guy, I would advise them to go meet Tao, especially between the ages of 17 and 25. Because... At that point, they haven't gone through the life experiences. It's common sense. But the thing is, in the Philippines, they understand a lot of the issues around these relationship problems. And they understand the, the way the court system is. If you sit and explain it, and they'll actually turn around and say to you, well, that doesn't make any sense. So you're telling me that you financially drain the the man uh, in a divorce. At the same time, the woman gains the house, the kids, and whatever's left, and monthly installments. Um, even though, in a 50-50 split, why the hell is the woman receiving monthly money? Because if she's at working age, get a job. 
Um, but in the Philippines, they understand the logic. They don't be like, but why? It doesn't make any sense. And that's that's the whole point. And this is, well, that's why I chose the um, the the bit relating to the family friendly hours because that's one of the very many things that have occurred in Western society that are allowing the distortion of equality as well as disrupting the family unit and other things. And then people sitting there were complaining because now MGTOW is coming out and saying, don't get into it, sidestep all of that. And I'll tell you now, if you've traveled and got a bit of experience and hit 25, you're gonna, you may even decide that you want to go full blown MGTOW anyway. Because you may have gained that much independence that you may not want to settle down. But a lot of guys are already looking to settle down when they leave school. Because it's what's been taught, but at the same time what hasn't been taught, which is where MGTOW is coming in, is how much distortion is being laid on top of what would be traditional life. And as such, it's distorting the facts. So it's all the same. Well, you should get married and everything else. At no point, somebody's saying, be aware, you're going to get fleeced. And that fleecing will continue until you're 18 or fleeced until your ex wife decides to marry. And she probably won't. She'll just have the boyfriend around three times a week so that she can continue receiving your paycheck. Um, that bit it doesn't get discussed. That's a re that's reality, but I've uh, seen it here in Spain. They use the same phrase as they do in the UK relating to schools. Because I've had it here and I've had it in the UK relating to how some of the teaching is not very good. Um, relating to here, mathematics really annoys me. It's a really stupid method. Um, it's the only country that seems to use this method. I'm not getting into that too much. Um, but I had the same in the UK with my daughter. Um, many years ago, we were talking about something um, and relating to handwriting and things like that. And they said, we don't educate people, we make well-rounded people. It's, uh, and it was said this same here in Spain by the, the principal here, and I just thought, they must be reading the same book of nonsense. Because well-rounded people are not successful people. The, the number of unskilled people in the UK, for example, the number of people who can't read and write in the UK is testament to that failing because they moved the responsibility from the education system to the parents to teach reading, writing, etc. But then we go full circle back to what I was talking about where both parents are working now. So who teaches the kids? Here in Spain, they parents do a lot of teaching. My kids spend hours um, a week doing homework. They're, they're still in primary school. In the Philippines, you will find, um, like with April's uh, nephews, etc., the mothers will sit there and spend hours with the kids, especially if their grades are low. They will sit there every night until they increase their grade. They're very focused on the education system. They're very focused on understanding that if you get ahead when you're a child, then your future is set in stone because you're now ahead of everybody else. Well-rounded people do not have that. Well-rounded people um, are not focused in that way because they've never been taught that way. Everybody gets a certificate. Thanks for watching.